Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. According to the official X account for the Invictus Games 2025, we're officially just about six months to go until the 2025 Games in Vancouver Whistler. And for those of you who are able, the first I am sign is located in the Jack Pole Plaza. You can go there and get some photos. There was also an adorable article that featured 14 wild celebrity meet cutes that might make you believe in love again. And of course, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were featured on that list. How adorable. Jeremy Vine is at it again. <laughs> then should we get to vote for the next king or queen? Over a third of people in a new poll think we should ignore the line of succession and we should say who replaces King Charles? Do you agree? And if so, who do you go for? Harry and Meghan? What about, is a thought, Princess Anne, whom we love? Or should we stick with William and Kate? She's pulling into the lead. Sultana in London, hello. Hello. Who would you vote for if, if it was a public vote, Sultana? I think you've got to vote for who's going to do most for the country and for the people. So George. So what I can see is that Harry has done the Invictus Games. Yes. Meghan has done a lot of work for charity. Yes. They seem to be serving the people. Wow. So I think, you know, William and, and Kate, they go to a few football matches here and there. Wimbledon, things like that. Look pretty, look. But they're not doing anything for the country. And so I think you need to see who will actually benefit the country more. Okay. I, I mean, this has thrown me slightly. Kate, Kate is unwell and Harry has fled has fled the country, so we, I mean, I what, are they, what are Harry and Meghan doing for the UK? Just help me understand. Okay, so Invictus. Harry's done the Invictus before, as Narinda, who I follow on Twitter and I love, has said that they fled for reasons of racism, for the media, the hounding, and it's quite clear that Don we didn't really, like, didn't really like Meghan, because... Meghan has done a lot, reason, sorry, Sultana. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, got, sorry. But I think Meghan's done a lot, she was doing a lot for the victims no, of Renfell. Listen, one more vote for Harry and Meghan, and, and it's a good possibility, it could be there. Say it to him, Quickly. we can the laziest royals. Okay, so two, two, none, I'm sorry George, but he's young. A strange vote for the Archbishop of Canterbury, and we declare Anne the winner on three votes, and that's scientific, okay? After why is this man including Harry and Meghan into the mix? Well, we all know why. Engagement. Got it. But also, he legitimately did an entire segment about what Meghan might have eaten on the morning of her birthday. Obsessed. Calls on whether it's okay to have chips for breakfast. 0207 862 Tell us what you think, especially if you do it. Chips or french fries, if you like, may have been on the menu for the Duchess of Sussex on her 43rd birthday yesterday because a clip has been unearthed where she reveals how she likes to start her special day. Take a look. For my birthday, since I don't have a sweet tooth, I always have french fries for breakfast with a little candle in <laughs> That's what chips for breakfast looks like. Okay, so we pile them up like Megan would, because this is what we think Megan is going to have. Because her, she doesn't have a sweet tooth. That's what is interesting about the clip that we just played. That, and I, 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 I'm jealous of that because I think I do have a sweet tooth, and it's not a good thing. But there is, there are certain foodstuffs that should not be eaten at certain times. It's easy, isn't it? That it's all <laughs> Excuse me, it's all avocado now. I tried to blame Megan for that one as well. Didn't yeah, I mean? well. I don't know. No. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah, they did. They said that it was funding war. But um, I just don't know what we would do as a media without a story about Meghan Markle, you know. She's it's true, that's where it comes from. Breakfast. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't have necessarily said that that was her thing in the sense that it's quite, yeah, it's an unusual unusual thing to be saying, that you eat chips for breakfast. It's not, you know, it's all interesting character. Well, oh, I love me some Meghan. But is it, is it that interesting that you would have a show on national TV an entire segment dedicated to Megan eating chips for her birthday. Possibly. What is going on? <laughs> in the last video, we touched on the riots going on in the UK. And there was a lot of people on various social media accounts talking about Megan's experience within the UK, within that family, and how that has sort of been an eye opener to them about the race relations in the UK. I'm about to say something that's gonna piss a lot of people off and I don't give a shit how you like that. You ready? Megan Markle was right. Mm, Megan Markle was right, bitch. Do you see what is going on in the UK right now? Oh my. God, I just had two videos on my FYP from two different women 
saying how they're scared to walk around their neighborhood. They're scared to let their kids play outside because they're people of color. Oh yeah, Meghan Markle and Harry are sitting in their house in California watching this shit. And she's like, I told you, I told you so. Nobody wanted to listen to me. Everybody said I was dramatic. Everybody said I was stupid American from Compton. She's like, I was clocking that shit everywhere. Red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag everywhere. Until, you know, Megan had to say, Harry, we got to go. For real. She was pointing that shit out. Megan goes over there all optimistic because, you know, she's American. All friendly, nice, smiling. Hey, guys, I'm so happy to be here. I love Harry so much. I got some ideas. I'm excited. And they're all like, <laughs> okay, we don't need to rehash history. And I know you got to do the disclaimer. We don't mean all British people. We understand. It's a wackadoo group. We get it. But I'm just saying, Meghan Markle was right. She literally was getting the death threats and everything. And she's like, I can't hear. Girls are crazy over here. That's it. Harry's like, I got to protect my family. Psh, they're out. <laughs> The truth hurts, don't it? You got some problems over there. I know you like to constantly point out the problems we have here in America. Which focus on yourselves. Okay, goodbye. I just gotta say, round of applause to the comment section. Hold on, I'm gonna put the phone. I really thought that I was gonna receive all this hate from Meghan Markle haters, from Prince Harry haters, from royal supporters. I was ready, girl. I was ready to fight. I thought that was what was coming my way. Look at this beautiful comment section. Thank you very much, each and every one of you. Either this video didn't make it to that side of the TikToks, or these people are just sitting like, mm, we can't really, we can't really weigh in on this one. She's right. Either way, I don't care. Bravo to all of you. And for those of you that might not know who I am, besides being lemon on this app, I came on over a year and a half ago uh, because I was recapping and discussing Prince Harry's memoir because I love Meghan and I can love Prince Harry and I always say I have. That's who I am. So, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. In the last video, we spoke about the silence from King Charles. And, well, we weren't the only ones. There was articles from several media sources. The Times, King Charles urged to break royal silence on UK riots and racism. There was even an article from France saying UK riots, Charles III's deafening silence begins to disturb. Yikes. After the video, Charles did in fact respond. And according to Peter Hunt, it's taken 10 days for the king, who prides himself on being a symbol of national unity, to comment. In doing so, Charles hasn't called out the racism or Islamophobia. To remain relevant, his officials will need to be more fleet of foot in the future. Fleet of foot. I've never heard that saying before. Hmm. But I do agree. The words that Charles used was, let me see, he gave heartfelt thanks to the police and emergency services for all they are doing to restore peace in those areas that have been affected by violent disorder. As Peter said, or Mr. Hunt, my bad. But as he said, he did not call out racism or Islamophobia. And I wonder why. This man. <laughs> the head of state for several commonwealth nations most of which have black and brown folk will never be this national symbol of unity his actions have shown us this all along he's never truly going to call out things like that in any substantial way and i doubt that william would be any different and this is not just because I don't care for them. They're actions, right? It's all about paying attention to the things that people do and sometimes don't do. Now this Twitter user says how difficult it must be for Charles to speak against hate and racism when he is at the center of the same 
directed to his daughter-in-law. And there it goes. As much as the British tabloids love to tell us that Harry and Meghan have done so much damage to that family, I disagree. Yes, highlighting the things that they have gone through gives us a deeper understanding of what really goes on behind the scenes. What a mess it is. And I'm pretty sure, as Megan said, you know, she's barely scratched the surface, so God knows what else that woman experienced in that environment. But the actions and inactions of the palace and those within it does a pretty good job of making themselves look bad. I think we can stop the argument and questioning of why the British royal family are not speaking on the unfortunate events going on in the UK right now, the riots, the riots based on somebody's racial background and skin color. We deal with this on a daily basis in America. It has nothing to do with them being political because during the craziness that was going on during her late majesty called for unity during the pandemic. Same thing that Charles could do. I mean, kind of his his job to unite the his people, his subjects, his realm. However, you can't do that if your family is a constant contradiction of what you talk about and what you try to put out there in the world. I.e. mental health. Prince William especially, and other members of the royal family outside of Harry and Meghan, advocate for mental health. Well, how many members of the British royal family and how many members who married into the British royal family have struggled with mental health and then have talked about not being able to get the help that they needed and told to, you know, have a stiff upper lip? Carry on. Therefore, how do you expect a family who could not stand up for one of its members, feeding stories on one of its members, really come out and say, hey, you black and white subjects, you people need to stop it. Stop it. Let's go for tea. <laughs> but at this point, they can't do that because, again, it would contradict everything they have done leading up to this point, or in their case, not done, and in another case, done to her specifically. Allowing your media to literally trash so bad a woman of color, an American woman of color. Still to this day, this is 2024. Harry and Meghan have been dating since 2016. In two years, it will be 10 years of literally trashing this woman. You find no, next to no, none, zip, zada. Articles surrounding Prince, Prince Andrew would be their bread and butter if they really wanted to carry it. And I could go there about other members of the British royal family. And this is why Charles has had the reign he deserves. You would think that uh, members of the royal family, senior members, would want all the media attention on them. There is next to none. Edward, Sophie, Anne, they leave the country, go on tours, nothing. Sarah markets herself as Sarah, comma, Duchess of York on everything. And in a way, she has a right to because technically that is her name. She is still quote unquote titled, just not an HRH. But they fuss and fight about Meghan being referred to as the Duchess of Sussex. That is her title. Her title has not been removed. Therefore, there are a lot of contradictions. That is why I feel that the British royal family should really shut up on this matter. There is nothing for them to say. You cannot advocate for peace when you have not allowed peace within your own family. You have not allowed mental health for members of your family, but you advocate for that. So there you have it. That is why I'm fairly certain they have not said anything. It's nothing to do with being political because it's Charles's job, again, to unify his people, his subjects. And if that is not the advice being taken, it's a lost cause. Now, I love reading you guys' comments. I try to respond to as many as I can. Sometimes I do fall behind. <laughs> I am guilty of that. But in reading some of the comments, sometimes people would say, why do we care what is written in the tabloids or what Harry and Meghan haters have to say? And for the most part, I try to keep this channel as a positive space, highlighting the projects and things that Harry and Meghan are up to. Sometimes we do call out the hypocrisy and misinformation. And I do this or try to find a balance between those things because occasionally I do get comments from people who 
the way the questions are phrased, it's very evident that they don't pay as much attention as, let's say, a regular Harry and Meghan fan who is a lot more involved. So we can sort of spot the nonsense from a mile away. Everyone doesn't pay that much attention. Everyone doesn't know. And most of you know, if you search on places like right on here, a lot, there are a lot of channels that are nothing but negativity and misinformation. So sometimes these are the things with higher reach and there will be people who that is the first thing that they come upon when searching for content about Harry and Meghan. And some of them sort of believe it. Some of them totally believe it. Some of them are just wondering, wait, is that real? So they ask questions in the comments. And this is why I try to find the balance of responding to those, providing information in the videos, but still trying to be a little bit positive. So thank you to each and every one of you who watch and listen and comment. And if you do like the content and you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you here. This article was written entirely around a made up law that Angela Levin gave in I don't know, on a Twitter thread or something. I'm not really sure where it came from. I actually Googled some of the things that she said and lo and behold, what do I get back? Several YouTube videos parroting the same exact words that Angela Levin said. So I'm not sure if the videos came first and Angela watched them to get ideas on how to bash Megan or if she just said these things on Twitter and then people made the videos. People that hate Harry and Meghan, they're literally proving the point. Meghan says something about how if she has to take a hit for people to see that bullying can cause a lot of damage and that there's real parents out there, you know, mourning the loss of their child because of social media bullying. She'll take the hit, and here these people are making things up and 100% proving her point. And I don't think that they care they're proving her point because they're making a lot of money lying like this. And that's the thing. They genuinely don't seem to care. And I feel like that in a lot of ways is the problem whether it's the media or social media, the combination of misinformation and salacious and often hateful narratives continuously amplified creates a combustive environment. And we see that in the riots in the UK and the million and one incidences that we see on the news here in the US, born from misinformation, the us versus them mentality Far too many people don't seem to pay attention to how harmful it is to us as a society. That's why it's so important to see organizations like Archwell holding these organizations or attempting to hold media and social media accountable for the environments that they allow things to fester in and also for organizations like Archwell that try to create a community where people are able to come together, people whose lives have been horribly impacted by the failings of social media and the media, to have a sense of community and know that they are not alone. It breaks my heart. It makes me feel sad. That's how it makes me feel. I have a daughter, she's mixed race. So obviously, you know, it's difficult for her as well. I think it's horrible and it's sad, if I'm being honest. I think, I, I think it's I just think they're picking on everybody. Um, and just smash. Why would they, why wouldn't they want to I believe, and I don't know how true this is, but we've been told that they're going to have a go at Aldi. Aldi German. What's all that about? I really don't get it. I don't know where they come. Do you get a job? Do you need to get a job? But there's obviously no justification for threats and intimidation, and the people who perpetrate that kind of thing are clearly stupid. But we're upholsterers. We work down here in the mill down here. Every, like I say, everyone's evacuated and that. Everyone's evacuated. Everyone's scared. It's just it's fear mongering, isn't it? That's what it is. It's fear mongering at the end of the day. I'm a scouser, born and bred in the city of Liverpool. Um, I've always loved Liverpool. I've classed Liverpool to be my home city, my place and where I was and raised, where I was born, where I can flourish and where I can succeed in. But seeing the events that have just um, taken place in the city of Liverpool, and not just the city of Liverpool, but in the UK as a whole, that's really scary. I don't think I can recommend any of my black, brown or Muslim 
friends or followers to move to the UK. If you don't know me, my name's Jordan. I'm an American in London. I've lived here for almost five years. If you've missed it, there have been riots all up and down England all weekend in protest. Farm is a problem in England and I don't think anybody really wants to discuss how big of a problem it is. And like, I think I knew this moving in because I am, I do political science, I do international relations. That's my job. That's my, what I studied. I have seen videos of people being attacked, women being kicked in the face and having their hair pulled. There have been reports of acid attacks. People set a migrant hotel on fire and then blocked the doors. See symbols, it is really bad right now. It's making me scared and I live in London. There are a lot of people who are counter protesters who have been going and showing up and the police have also been out, but at the same time, it does not negate that these things are happening. The UK loves to say that it's not racist and that they don't have like the, a race problem like they do in the US, but they do. I can in good faith not talk about this while also talking about people moving into the UK and giving people tips for that when people are getting in the street and people are just being attacked for being black and brown on the street. Do not take this as the US does not have a race problem because they do. Denying you have a systemic and institutional problem does not make the UK better than the US, it just means that you're ignorant. I'm hoping that this is kind of the wake up call that the UK needs to take a hard look in the mirror. It requires white people standing up and saying this is not okay. I don't want to dissuade anybody from moving here because I've been so fortunate to move here. And I love living in London and I love the where I live. I love my life right now. But I cannot tell people that it is all sunshine and rainbows here because it's not. It would be disingenuous if I were trying to pass off living in the UK as some escape from American racism when it is just as bad as it is in the US. London might be a bit of an exception to that rule, but London does also have its issues, many of them. So what I will say is be careful and be safe to everybody. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.